an often heard uh, objection against a libertarian socialist society is that no one would bother to work in it. Uh, you think that's a valid objection? What about those that don't want to work? Well, it's, it's an interesting concept. Actually, this is one of the things in which I've differed for some time on the para, with the Paracon people. Mm. They basically have the same view. Uh, Mike Albert, Robin Hannell, and the others, we've disagreed about this for many years. Uh, it's a question of what you think work is. I mean, there is a point of view associated with capitalist systems uh, that holds that work is a burden. If you weren't driven to work, you'd prefer to vegetate. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with human beings. And in fact, it's kind of striking that the people who hold this view, uh, most of them come from the university or in scientific backgrounds. Well, you, you go into, say, the university where I work, MIT, uh, mainly scientific university, and people are working 80 hours a day, 80 hours a week, because they love their work. And their work is under their own control you know, of all the social institutions, these uh, especially science-based uh, universities are places where you really do control your own work. I mean, you've got to meet some conditions, but it's pretty much uh, controlled by participants. So, you know, f optimally and in fact often realistically. And under those conditions, people just want to work. Uh, uh, the carpenters who love what they're doing and can control it, they work all the time. Uh, and in fact, you know, there's an old tradition from the Enlightenment, which is, you know, came out, grew into classical liberalism and finally anarchism, which holds that work is the, should be the highest, one of the highest ideals of life. Creative work under your own control. And I think most people know that that's true. When you have an opportunity to do creative work under your own control, with especially if it has some social purpose and so on, you know, it's the best thing to do. It's a lot better than you know lying on a couch and uh, watching a boring television program. So I just think it's the wrong. Co it's a concept of work that comes out of capitalist ideology, which says people have to be driven to work. Actually, it's very interesting to watch the debates about this. It's debated uh, in mainstream circles, not so much in these terms. But uh, take a look at the debates about uh, uh, a taxing, uh, uh, taxation of the wealthy. The standard argument against taxing the wealthy is, uh, well, if you, if you put high taxes on the wealthy, they're not going to do anything. And they're the ones who invest and make things happen and so on and so forth. Now, the, the people who press this most are economists. And sometimes it's almost comical. There was an article. Uh, one of the major journals, by a, a well-known Harvard economist, liberal economist, uh, Greg Mankiw, who wrote the major texts. And he argued, he said, look, you can't, ta he's kind of a liberal, he says, you can't tax the rich because they're not going to do anything. And then he, there's, pr there's no economic theory behind it or any other theory, uh, but he just, so he gives an example of himself. He says, well, if I didn't have a high salary, I wouldn't do anything. You'd never get anyone in a university saying that except from an economics department. <laughs> and that's because the ideology is so built in. They can't think. They can't look at the next office and see that uh, you know, the guy's in the lab all day because he loves what he's doing. Of course people want to, want to do meaningful work, especially if they can run it themselves. Uh, the Paracon position that I've disagreed with is uh, they want, they believe that pay remuneration ought to be uh, uh, proportional to input. You know, the harder you work, the more you should be paid. But I think that's a very demeaning conception of not only of what work is, but what human beings are like. And I don't, I don't even think it's true. You know, in fact, they themselves work very hard and they don't get paid for it. So are they different from other people? You know? If a person works on order, let's say a craftsman produces something on orders or under coercion, we may admire what he does, but we despise what he is because he's a machine and we want people to be human. 
And you find exactly the same thing in Adam Smith, incidentally. Uh, one of the reasons, Adam Smith was very critical of division of labor. I mean, he has an ode to division of labor at the beginning of Wealth and Na of Nations, but if you go on, he criticizes it at the end. And he criticizes it because he says, if we let division of labor continue, we will reduce people to creatures as stupid and as ignorant as it's possible for a creature to be, because they'll simply be carrying out mechanical operations under command in a very limited domain. And what you are, you know, your intelligence, your understanding, your your human characteristics come from your capacity, your, from the options available to you to carry out independent, productive, creative activities, work included, uh, maybe in free association with others because we're social beings, but uh, not under external coercion. Marx himself was a complex figure, the early Marx. So you read the philosophical manuscripts and so on. The, you know, this is coming straight out of the French, French and German Romanticism. So the kinds of ideas you find expressed in Humboldt and in the more libertarian side of Rousseau, Rousseau himself was very split, but if you take the libertarian S part of Rousseau, the second discourse on inequality and Humboldt and so on, all of this was, that's the background in which Marx grew up. And if you read the uh, philosophical and manuscripts of the early period, they're immersed in this. So his theory of alienation comes out of this. Uh, work coerced labor is alienating and counter to human nature. At the core of human nature again is a kind of what was later called by Bakunin an instinct for freedom that is a, uh, a need to become involved in uh, free creative activity, free creative work. So for say Humboldt uh, one's work is sort of the core of one's existence. You want to be involved in creative, honest uh, work uh, in association with others, but voluntary association and not under external control. These things have mostly been forgotten. Uh, so the, as the market systems of the 19th century developed, they eliminated all of this. Uh, they would have appalled Adam Smith, no doubt, you know, the, the market systems that developed because they uh, it, when you get to people like, say, Malthus and uh, Ricardo and so on, the conception of human beings as freely creative, active people with intrinsic rights due to their nature disappears, and people become nothing more, they have no values other than, value other than what they can sell on the market, their labor power. If you can't sell your labor power on the market, you have no right to live. That's the way it was discussed. Uh, because there's nothing to a human being other than what can be attained by sale of labor power within a market system under what become basically totalitarian structures, corporate structures and so on. So the modern extensions of classical liberalism are very anti-libertarian uh, and these ide and the ideologies change and you know the intellectuals change and so on. So this tradition has pretty much been, well if not wiped out, at least marginalized, but it's there and it certainly can be revived. It stayed alive and uh, for example, in the anarchist tradition and in parts of the libertarian left uh, in the United States, uh, you find traces of it as late as real traces, as late as people like John Dewey, who probably didn't know any of these things, but just came out of it from another source and you know reached the same point in his conception of democracy as of value because it opens the opportunities for people to freely liberate themselves as they must do. It's their sort of core and essence. In the contemporary world, you'd be hard put to find much discussion of this, unfortunately. But I think it should be revived. I think it's very significant.